All right, so welcome back. Multiplying, dividing rational polynomials now. When you have a few uh, polynomials and uh, sometimes you have them as rational polynomials, what happens when you start multiplying and dividing them? Well, I'm going to kind of take you back first because, you know, at some point in elementary school, you were doing fractions and then probably you were doing some kind of a review and maybe in grade nine. And when you're de dealing with fractions, it was always super worthwhile to try to simplify and reduce your fractions before actually multiplication and division. So you see this example right here. And if you're going to want to see a lot more of these examples, you know, maybe you've forgotten it. I'll put up a link up above there for these multiplication and division of fractions. And some of those uh, in that video might be a little bit challenging as well. Now here, we know that for multiplication and division of fractions, you know, so if you have, let's say, A over B, and then you want to multiply C over D, um, it's very simple to just say A times C divided by B times D, and then we would get our answer. Now, if we were dividing them, so if we had A over B, and then we had division, so C over D, you know, we would have the reciprocal, basically, division of those uh, fractions and then you know it would return us back to multiplication that's something that many of us remember but when i kind of go through this i always remind students to always try to reduce as much as possible and now where this is going to become super useful is when you are actually dealing with rational polynomials and then you have factors which you can um, completely cancel off which is going to help you and make those rational polynomials is much, much smaller to deal with, especially if you ever had to graph it. So here as a kind of a refresher, so if I take this, you know, so we have eight over 10 multiplied by let's say negative three over two. Now division changes to multiplication by the reciprocal. So this is gonna be five over four. And then we have another multiplication. Notice here we have a whole number. So that whole number is simply negative three over two and it's improper form. And so from here, sure, I mean, I can go ahead and just multiply all of these, then take all my denominators, multiply them, and then start to find um, the reduced form. But it is actually worthwhile to see if there's any cancellations of uh, factors that you might have in between. So right away, you know, I can see, for instance, uh, right here, what I would have is I have this eight and then the eight. So notice here at the bottom in the denominator. So I have a two, which will go into the eight and it will go four times. Um, and then what I have is I have another four. So this four is going to go into this four and it nicely reduces that for us. You know, so basically same factors, you can cancel them off anywhere that you like. Now, is there anything else that I see here? Well, I do see actually a five is a factor of a 10. And so therefore this is gonna reduce this to two. Now, once we have this, then it's much simpler. So what's left here, I have a minus three uh, multiplied, I guess, by another minus three over here. And then in the denominator, what I have left is just two and then another two. So in total, so that's going to be nine over four. You can put it as a mixed number if you like, which is going to be two and one quarter. That's something as a, a refresher for you in terms of just regular fractions, right? Now where this is important because these are actually rational numbers. And then so if you have rational polynomials, um, we're going to try to do exactly the same thing by cancellations. And maybe you have run into this already when you started doing a little bit of work with exponents, right? And you had some variables and some unknowns. So here's another example, right? So this is basically, uh, we have rational polynomials within here. We have multiple variables. And how would we transform this so it kind of looks like the fraction above? Because we don't really have numbers here per se, but we do have a lot of variables which we might be able to cancel off. So for instance, you know, so first, yes, we have a division. So the same thing works as in regular fractions. So we know that this is going to be nothing else but 2xy all over z 
or z, multiplied by the reciprocal, so this is going to be z over 2, divided by 6xy. That's what we're going to be taking a look at first. And now, if I want to be able to multiply, so sure, I can go ahead and multiply the numerators and then the denominators, but I do notice that there's a lot of things which are in common which I can factor um, and then cancel. So for instance, I notice that this uh, 2 right here goes into the 6 and it goes into it three times. So that's something that you would see with regular fractions. Now I start kind of going through and seeing, okay, well, I do have an x squared here and I have an x here as well. So 1x and then the x. So this one is going to be gone and this is just going to be x on its own. Then I can shift over again and I notice, oh, well, great, my y will cancel out with the y over here. So that's gone. And then finally, this z is going to cancel out or the z is going to cancel out one of these. So that's all I'm going to have left is that. And if you notice that now I only have x multiplied by z, I'm going to try to keep that little multiplication smaller than the x, and then in the denominator, all I have left really is just that 3. So in its entirety, this is now just x, z, all over 3. So this rational, and it is polynomials, I guess, within here. And what I have is I've simplified it quite a bit by exactly the same process as I would with just regular fractions because fractions are just rational numbers. And within here, we're going to be using exactly the same thing. Now, this, of course, can get a little bit more challenging because your polynomials and then your rational polynomials can become a little bit harder to work with where it's not just variables. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is you might have something like this. So here we have two functions right there. Um, we know that we will have to restrict the denominators. Now, I will talk about the restrictions of these rationals um, in kind of a separate part two video. So I'm going to put up a link up above there once that video is up and running. But for here, I just want you to be comfortable in kind of multiplication and division of these rational polynomials and then just be able to factor things out and then also cancel things off. So we can simplify things for ourselves. Now, if within this, so within this f, so notice I have basically uh, several factors. So I have this factor, x plus 1. I have another factor here, 2x plus 3. And then in the denominator, I have an x plus 5. In my g of x, or g at x, so I have this. Now I have two of those right there. Then I have another factor at the denominator and then another one here. So if it's asking me to multiply these two together, I'm going to multiply them and again, try to see if I can cancel anything off um, within here. So let's rewrite these things in its entirety. So f is x plus one, then it's two x plus three um, divided by, this is gonna be x plus five. So that's the first one. So I have this one out of the way. Now we want to multiply this by, so here is my second one, which is x plus 5. Now this is squared. And then it's divided by 2x plus 3 and x minus 1. Now everything here is factored, right? It's already in factored form, so it's much simpler for me to be able to see what cancels off and what doesn't cancel off. Right, so for instance, I can very quickly tell that here, so this 2x plus 3, notice it's going to cancel this 2x plus 3. So that's going to be gone right away. So this is gone because it just cancels each other off. Now, I can't really cancel off the x plus 1 with anything in the denominators, but I can cancel, again, this x plus 5. So I have this, and I can cancel one of these right there, so one of them will be gone. So this one is gone, and there's only one left here, so you know we don't have that anymore. And if you look at this now, this is much, much simpler. So what is this equal? Well, I have x plus one, 
That's the only thing that is left within here, and that's supposed to be multiplying. Now the x plus 5 divided by, and this is x minus 1. So that's what I have there. Now, depending on what your teachers will want, so sometimes you know they will want you to leave it in factored form, or sometimes they will want you to distribute and expand this thing out. So you will have x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 5. This is now divided by x minus 1. And if they want it in fully expanded form, so sure, we can do that. So this is going to be x squared plus, so notice that we're just distributing across. All right, so it's going to be 5x plus x plus 5. That's in the numerator divided by x minus 1 right there. Then we can collect our like terms. It's going to be plus 6x plus 5 all over x minus 1. Now, that's much nicer than it would have been if we didn't cancel things off. And that's what we mean by having these rational polynomials and then being comfortable and then canceling things just as you normally would with regular fractions. So when you actually deal with fractions, you can see that it just keeps translating along in math. Um, so it's certainly worthwhile to be familiar with fractions in general and what all of the different operations would be. All right, so here's another example. So this one is... A rational polynomial except it's not factored in any particular way so when we're going to be working with this we're going to try to simplify this as much as possible um, and we're going to have to try to see if there's any common factors between the numerator and denominator in order to do that simplification so kind of step one try to see and um, you know if you can factor out Kind of a greatest common factor i guess from both i'm just kind of scanning it they're both quadratics so we can't really take out any a's from there but we can see i can take out a three so first so from the numerator i mean i can kind of factor out the three so that's going to give me two a squared plus three so that's seven a plus five um, it would be nice if we could. So now we have 18. So 3 we can factor out. Uh, 51, so our old trick. So 5 plus 1 is 6. So 3 goes into that and it goes into that. So great. So we can factor out that. So that's going to leave me 6a squared plus uh, 3 into 51. Um, once that's 17. And then... So 3, 15, so that's 5. Okay, so at least it's reduced somewhat. Um, now, again, so since they're quadratics, we'll try to um, decompose this because they're certainly not perfect squares and not difference of squares. Now, if you've forgotten some of the factoring for polynomials, I'll put up a link up above there. You can check that out. Now, returning to these, I'm going to take the first one. So let's take this one first. And let's try to see if I can decompose this. So 2 times 5 is 10. And two numbers added to get, well, 2 plus 5. Okay, so that's the first one. So 2a squared plus, I guess, 5a plus 2a. That's going to be 7. And that's going to give me what I need there. So that's in the numerator, so that's going to work. So I'm going to be able to factor that out. Now in the denominator, let's see what I can do there. 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, so this one's also not that bad because 17, that's 2 times 15. So it looks like we can factor these out. So that's going to be 15a plus 2a plus 5. Um, so now let's kind of group them together. And so, for example, right here, I'll take out, I guess I can only take out the A. It's going to leave me 2A plus 5. And then in here, so I'm grouping this together, well, I can only take out the 1. So I guess it's going to be 2A plus 5 because we want those common. In the denominator, all right, so let's group these together can take out a 3 and an a so 3a 
Um, if I do that, it's going to leave me 2a plus 5. And I guess, okay, so there's my, it's going to be the same thing here. Um, and now, so factoring the whole thing out, so what I have is a plus 1, 2a plus 5 divided by, this is now going to be 3a plus 1, and then 2a plus 5, and now you can see that indeed, so here is my common factor to both that I can just cancel, and that leaves me, so that means my final answer is much simpler than the original, right, which is what I started off right here. And I'm sure you're going to run into this at some point in school if you're going to be doing functions and then rational polynomials. So it's worth your time to try to remember how to factor and then how to simplify just like you would with a regular fraction. So that was another example. Let's do a final example. So here as I've prepared something for you right here, this one's a little bit more annoying because it's bigger. Uh, but let's see what it will yield us um, within here. So first of all, okay, so within here, um, I can't really do much there. Okay, so division, so that's going to be between these two. Okay, so what I have is 3 all over x plus 2. Now the division right here turns into multiplication. And that multiplication is going to be, so I guess, 2x squared plus 3x all over um, x squared minus 1. Um, that's my numerator. Now I am dividing, so I'm dividing this whole thing by the denominator. So again, so that's going to be multiplication and so x squared plus 4x plus 4 divided by x. All right, so that's what I have. Now let me, so that I don't confuse these, I'm going to put them in a different color. So these multiplications like that. So they're not like variables. Um, all right, so now we're going to have to try to see, okay, can we factor a lot of things out? I already said we can't really do anything with this thing, so I'm going to leave this as it is. Now, with the second one, I can actually take out the x there. So notice that's going to be 2x plus 3. Um, in the denominator, um, that's a difference of squares, x squared minus 1. So x plus 1 and x minus 1. All right, so so far we have that. And then the last one is going to be x. Okay, so that's going to be good. Now within here, um, that's a perfect square. That's x plus 2 times x times 2. Okay, I'll, I'll write them out both. All right, but that's that. All right, and now we basically try to see, okay, so what can we reduce? This was all multiplication. So x plus 2 right here. So that's one of the x plus 2. So I can cancel that. So that's going to be gone. That's 1. Um, so here's another one. So x and the x. So that's gone. So that's another one. And unfortunately, I think that's it. All right. Okay, so then what that leaves me with on top is 3, 2x plus 3, and then x plus 2, divided by, and then in the denominator, it's x plus 1 and x minus 1. That's what I'm going to have there, right? 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2. Now, if you want to expand it, you can. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. And that would have been the kind of reduced. And clearly you can see that it's a rational polynomial that we have and are dealing with. Now, in part number two, I'm going to actually take these and I'm going to talk about restrictions so that you have it. And now, so restrictions, if you ever had to graph it, you know, so restrictions just tell us kind of what the domain is and which values of X or the inputs that we have. So X or I guess the A in here, you know, what we have to actually worry about. You know, we have talked about domains before, put up a link up above there for domains, um, but 
within here, especially for rational polynomials, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Okay, so I'll do that in part two. Um, you know, the link was, I guess, a little bit earlier, and that would have been the next follow up video in this series. Okay, we'll see you in a future video, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.